Well, hi, and welcome to my shop today. Today, as you can probably guess from the big tube tester sitting out here, I'm going to be testing uh, all the tubes in the in the receiver. Uh, it's probably a good idea before I do the alignment. There's an awful lot of tubes in there. So it's not like your regular radio with two or three uh, you know, RF type tubes. This thing's loaded with them. So, so I'm gonna go through them all. I'll try to do this in such a way that you just kind of see the results as I go tube by tube. So you won't have to watch me spend a lot of time setting up between tubes and things like that. So, uh, and uh, probably I'm gonna start with the, uh, well, why don't we start at the speaker end of the deal? Actually, it's not really a speaker, is it? It's more the output going over to the amplifier. So we'll start with the 45s and we'll just work our way to the front of the radio. So I'll get that, uh, I'll get that set up. So maybe on this first tube, I'll run through the process of setting this up just in case you've never seen this being done before. Uh, or, or you're interested in this particular tube tester, which is made here in Canada, but it's modeled after a well-known uh, tube tester. So here in Canada, this is called the Stark 966. It's a wonderful tube tester. I have tested hundreds and hundreds of tubes on here. I've also compared this tube tester to two other excellent tube testers I have. All of them work well, but they won't give you the same number for the mutual conductance. They won't. And why is that? That's because the tube does not have a fixed mutual conductance. The actual uh, sort of transconductance of the tube is based on how the tube is being operated, the plate voltage, all kinds of things. So each of these tube testers tests them a little bit differently and has its own target numbers, which are always written down here on the roll chart. So you can't, you can't, like if you look on eBay and you see people selling tubes and they'll say the transconductance or the mutual conductance, whatever they want to call it, is 2,500. But they don't tell you what tube tester they use. That number doesn't mean a darn thing. It just doesn't mean anything. You can't, you can't look at the mutual conductance numbers listed here and compare them to a tube manual. The same thing's happening in the, in the tube manual. In the tube book, if they quote the, uh, the, the mutual conductance, transconductance, if they quote it in here, which I'm sure they do, it's probably a ten here, transconductance. See, it's 4,000. With this tube, what am I looking at? A 6SH7, never even heard of it. So the transconductance here is 4,000. At 100 plate volts, at 250 plate volts, it's 4,900. So the, even in the book, you can see there is no one set transconductance. Okay, so I've made that point. <laughs> like I made it too far. Okay, so now setting this guy up, power's off, dial in the tube we're interested in here. It's a 45. It's going to be over here. 45. Okay, so we set the filament voltage here to 2.5 volts. That's very low. J, R. So these two set which uh, pins are going to be uh, supplied with the filament voltage. So this is picking the, the heater pins, basically. Then we come along here, picking off, this is the grid. So the, the, the grid is set to number three. What number three exactly means, I couldn't tell you. Two, and then zero, zero, zero. Zero probably means no connection. And we set the bias control to 61. And we set the English, which just controls the uh, scale here, to 72. Now this English setting is only means something when the meter selector is on English. And that way you can just go on the good replace scale. But if you want to actually measure the transconductance of the tube as it's being tested in here, then you would set this to one of the three scale settings. 3,000, 6,000, or what's the last one? 15,000. So a bunch of different buttons here for doing different kinds of, of tests. Um, so if you're testing a rectifier tube, there's a special button for it, but mostly you're pushing this red one, which is why they, well, you can hardly see it's red in there. It, it's a red button, quite easy to see with my eyes for the uh, transconductance uh, test. 
this particular tube tester, you can change these settings while the tube is in here and it's turned on and everything, as long as you don't change these, these two, the filament ones because the voltages are only applied to the tube when the test button is pushed. But other tube testers not like that. Other tube testers, and one of mine is like this, if you start turning these controls while you have a tube plugged in, you can momentarily put a high voltage onto the filament or, or something like that. So, really, so you gotta know your tube tester. This guy is really great. Let's get a 45 in there. So as you, so, so this is the early numbering system of tubes. They were just kind of numbering them one, two, three, four, five, and they got up to 45. So I'm just making sure it says 45 on it, and it does. I'll take a little bit of the dust off here. Dust them off. I think it's good to have these uh, glass globes as clean as possible. Now there's a W mark on here. No idea why or. Or, or is it an M? No, I need the W. Why, why would somebody put a W on there? This is the West tube. So the switch is off. Everything's set, but let's double check. I always, well, I almost always double check this. 2.5, very important. JR, very important. 3200, 61 on the bias. That's also quite important. 72, and you'll see me do a little sensitivity study often on these tubes, especially if the uh, if the rating is low on the tube, if the measurement comes low, then I'll move this a little bit. See how sensitive the bias is. If the little bit of movement in the bias causes the meter to, to go like this, then I'm gonna raise questions in my mind about is the tube really bad? Because ultimately the tube test is in the device you want it to operate in. This is a four pinner. Two of the four pins are fat, two are thin, and that's what controls how you put this in. Some interesting marks on the top of the, right inside the tube. That's probably a sheet of mica across there. It's just holding all the elements. Uh, probably some writing going on. I often see writing inside tubes. Now, it's a little easy to force these in the wrong way. I don't want to do that. She's in. 2.5, switch on. Now, different tubes draw different amounts of current for their heaters. If the draw is really big, it will pull down the uh, supply voltage here. Why is this tube not heating up? Doesn't seem to be heating up. So notice the fuse light didn't didn't pop on a little bit. Okay, let's continue on. Okay, so we saw a flash here, which is a good thing. And another flash. If this light stays on, then there's a short between the elements and you gotta stop the tube test. You don't want to test a tube with short elements, the tube tester's not ready for that. So that's what the short test is primarily to protect the tube tester. Okay, we're ready. What do we get? Here, let's just take a little bit of a closer look. Now, so look at the meter really closely here. There we go. So the meter's on the 3000 scale. In the chart, it says that we should expect 1165. 1165, so we're on the 3000 scale here. So we see we're just just under a thousand. I'm not sure what that jumping is. Okay, and now I, I'm even going to turn the bias just slightly. It, it doesn't make that much difference. So this one is testing a little bit low. It's actually, what it's testing is below the reject point. So in a commercial setting in a store at this point, I'd be telling the owner you need a new one. I'm not saying that here, that's for sure. Oh, and I've got company. So let's, let's carry on here. And we'll, 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 we'll do the, uh, we'll do the other 45, because you see the whole thing's set up for the 45 now. Let me put this back in. And I'm going to be making notes of all this, and I didn't do that. 1100 was the number. Let's just keep on here. Just for the sake of the video here, let me just 
jump ahead and do this. Then I'll, then I'll stop and make notes and stuff. In she goes. Now. Now. That, that, that's me speaking cat, in case you're wondering. I don't, I don't have a six foot tall cat in here. Short test. There's the flashing. Flashing is reassuring. And did you step on my keyboard, cat? <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, so we're getting pretty much the same reading here. Let me get a closer look at it. Give you a closer look. So these, these are pretty important tubes. They're the output tubes. So it's coming up right around a, a thousand also instead of 1100. Now the high with a normal value, the one you should be happy about is 1800. <clears throat> so 1800 puts it way up here. So two weak 45s. According to, according to this tester. Now they both tested the same. I guess you would imagine that to be the case because they have been on the same journey together. They've been in the same radio, supposedly getting the same, uh, having the same you know, electrical pressures and all that kind of stuff. So if they are wearing down as they would. Uh, so what wearing down Probably in a tube like this means the cathode is uh, wearing out. The cathode cannot emit, um, emit electrons as, as well as it could when it was new. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to put these in, make some records, make some records, yeah. Make a record and uh, carry on with the next tube. Thanks, thanks for the help, Shadow. Really, really appreciate that. Well, I didn't get very far here. So we, we've done the two 45s, and now I just moved over to this 6C5, pulled it out, and what came out of the radio is a 6J5. So I have to do a little research now. Can you just plug a 6J5 in where a 6C5 is supposed to be? Okay, so a word on the internet is, yeah, you can swap those tubes. Uh, they're slightly different, but not different enough to worry much about. Here in my classic Radio Shack 2 substitution handbook. If I look up 6C5, I see it listed here a few times. 6C5, 6C5G, 6C5GT, 6C5GTG. And it lists all the different replacements. 65 6J5, 65G, 6J5, 65GT, 6L5, 6J5, there it is. So 6J5 is on this list every time. The internet agrees with the, the book. What are you doing, cat? <laughs> found something interesting back there. Okay. Learn something new every day here when you do this kind of work. So a 6J5 and a 6C5. Same kind of thing. Well, oh, she saw me go to the door and she thought I was going to miss my chance to go outside. No, you're not going outside. <laughs> it's the tube testing cat. Shadow of the tube testing cat. And I said something about doing this efficiently, didn't I? Make like a nice efficient video of all this tube testing. It's the cat's fault. It's throwing me off. Okay, let me set this guy up here and get him. Get her ready. 6J5. Okay, well, it's hardly worth turning the video off. I'm pretty quick at setting this up, but let's double check. 6J5. 6J5. 6.3. JR. 5307. 5307. Zero. You really don't want to get these set wrong. 23 on the bias, 73 on the English. My cat is knocking everything down. We're ready to go. Okay, this tube is supposed to come up to 1260. So 
1260 is up in this range here. Here we go. So again, between 1260 and 2000 would be great, be way up here. But uh, 1260, though, it's right on. Basically, it's right on the uh, time to replace it. 1200. But, you know, I, I would not. If I were selling tubes, hey, I would sell one at this point. <laughs> but I'm not. So I, I doubt replacing this would improve the set at all. But the only way to know is to really, you know, put a really bright one in there and see what happens. I don't even know that there's anything lacking in this set. Its performance could be right up to par right now. Okay, on to the next tube. The next tube is uh, six, two 6K7s, I think. Okay, so I'm going to issue a bit of a warning here. For, for those of you who aren't all that experienced with doing this kind of thing, and you're going to end up with a radio with these grid caps up on top. And by the way, they aren't always grids. Sometimes there's a plate cap up there. And you would find out the hard way if you touched it. But normally you can touch these. These are normally just grids. So the thing I want to talk about is removing the grid cap, which looks like a totally simple thing. Why not just grab it and twist it off? because there's a chance it's stuck tight onto the actual metal cap that's glued to the glass and if you start twisting this there's a really good chance you're going to loosen the cap and now your tube is halfway to the graveyard so to avoid that instead of applying the twisting force between the cap you're trying to pull off and the glass tube you try to apply the, void, the force between the part you're pulling off and the part it's stuck onto you need a little screwdriver this seems like overkill. Well, I'll tell you. Once you've messed up one of these tubes, and I don't want to, you will realize that this is a worthwhile exercise. And I've got all kinds of tubes I've collected where the cap is completely gone. There's just a little wire sticking out now because they ripped it right off. They ripped it right off. Right off. I think I'm just going to do all these now. Now it could be I could just grab this, twist it, and it would come right off, no problem. But the, the the difficulty here is finding out if that's the case will cost you the tube, maybe. So it's much better to kind of pry them off here. As clumsy as this seems to be. Now another thing is these the, these caps have springiness to them, so you can't do that with copper. Copper has no, has no ability to, to be springy. So these are steel. These are steel, and then you have a challenge connecting the wire, the copper wire, to the steel. So often what they do is they simply crimp it. There's no solder in here. They just crimp it really good. So you fill around with these long enough, they can start coming loose here. Or if it breaks right off, you get out your soldering iron and try to solder it back. Uh, good luck soldering it. one out. Okay, so I've got the, all these tubes ready to come out. And, uh, and we're starting with this guy. Um, okay, so I'll pull out again. Another thing. Don't grab them by the glass. It is so attractive to grab them by the glass. Don't do that. Okay, Grab them by the base. Get another a little screwdriver or something to pry a little bit. You know, our, our job on these things is to try to preserve these radios. We've got to preserve the tubes that go with them. This is a tongue saw. That's a manufacturer made in the U.S. This is a cool looking tube, too. It's got the uh, plate that's full of holes. It turns into kind of like a screen. Not to be confused with the electrical screen that is in here. I'm pretty sure there's a screen in here. Just going back to this tube, we're going to have to check something here. Um, you know, I'm going to jump and check it right now. So the original tube that was in here was probably a glass tube tube, like this one, glass tube. And now it has a metal clad glass tube. There's a glass tube inside here, by the way. So the metal cladding, though, acts as a shield. So there's a metal shield, similar to the shield up here, that they put right on the glass tube up here. So this is a self-shielding tube. 
but the original one wasn't. So there is a connection now that needs to be made between the metal of the can and, and in the radio, and it won't be there from the original tube. So we're going to turn this around, we're going to look at pin number one. Now some crises can occur here with this arrangement. Pin number one is not used on the original tube. That means pin number one is available as just a terminal point for connections, and the radio manufacturer may have used it. We have pin one now doing something totally unrelated to the, the tube itself. And you swap tubes, you put in this metal one, pin one now is connected to the metal can. Now it's connected to whatever it is that is on the pin down here. What should be on the pin is just, just aligned to the chassis. So the can is that chassis potential. But it could be that terminal is used for who knows what. So you might fire up the can of this tube with who knows what. So let's take a look and see. So pin number one, you know what? That's, when, that's what's been done in this radio, but it might, it might oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, uh, you know, my cameras are just not set up easily for me to... Okay, so I'm going to make a note of this and we'll deal with it later. But pin number one is this, and there's a capacitor connected to it. So, so in this radio, they use the opportunity to spare pin number one to make uh, electrical connections in there rather than stick in a terminal strip or do something else. we got to deal with that. Interesting, there doesn't seem to be any consequences, but uh, so it seems. So if we look at it closer, we might find out it's not a problem. <clears throat> now getting on with this. So just checking to see if the labels on this tube can be found. So very often, tube labels are washed off. People innocently buff them up and don't realize they're wiping off the... Uh, the label, so there's not a hint. Oh, it's right there. It's right there. It's just really hard to see. 6K7. 6K7. So there we are. That's what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to look up 6K7 here. Just a sec. Yeah, that's probably a little better. 6K7. Hang on another sec here. I bunged up my lighting. There we go. Oh, interestingly enough, six. Let's do this. Six, this is set for a six J five. Let's look at a six C five and see if the settings are the very, very same. Six C five. Six C five. There it is. J R, of course. Five three zero seven. Probably going to be the same. Twenty one, almost the same, and seventy three. They're pretty well exactly the same. Twelve sixty and two thousand. Same mutual conductance. So. An interesting way to use the tube tester to compare tubes. But now we're on our way to the 6K7. This is usually the point where I start getting confused. Actually, that point comes much earlier in the, in the deal. But okay, it's not obvious to anybody how confused I actually am. Zero, three, four, seven. See, the roll chart is slowly rolling, too. So it's so easy to start looking at the wrong line. That's why I double check these things because uh, I'm, almost, I'm always making mistakes here. JR. My cat is howling back there. 0347. 0347. Zero, 0. Woke up this morning and the temperature outside was 7 degrees. 7 degrees. 7 degrees uh, uh, Celsius. 19 and 66 with a 5 at the end there. Okay, I better do this again. JR0347 with a 5. Uh, 19 and 66. My cat is just throwing me all off. Yes, I know. Demanding to go outside. Let's at least get this one done. P4. So 915 and 1450. Oh, grid cap. So in this case, there's a grid cap. I have to make a grid cap connection. So on this tube tester, it has two output terminals here, one for a plate cap and the other for the grid cap. You see the grid cap is missing, the grid cap thing. You just have a little piece of wire hanging out here. That's it. Let's see what the cap is playing around with. But 
there. Crazy way of doing this, but it'll work. Okay, so the tube tester switched on. 6.3 is the uh, good. 6.3 is the heater. test. Good. Once again, the 6K7. Did I do 6J7? Did I mess that up? I think I messed that up. 6K7. 19 and 66. 19 and 66. No, I didn't. 915 on the uh, big dial here. 915. Right around the thousand. Oh! Doubt everything when you start reading tubes low. Doubt everything. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Which which one of these do you want to believe? I think I believe that. Whoops, not that. So there we are. So now we're reading up around uh, 1400 in the top reading for a 6K7, 1450. Right on. So this tube is testing like new, if, if you trust what I just did. Okay, now I have another one right away. So let me, uh, let me get that again. This guy came up to. Well, you wouldn't want to flop around something that was plugged into the plate here. Uh, but the uh, grid grid cap wire doesn't have much voltage on it of any sort. Okay, next tube out. Um, <laughs> let me pull that first one back out again. This is hard to read. Six K seven. This is no doubt a K. And this is no doubt a J. Where do we go again? Can you stick a 6J in place of a 6K? And they look identical. What would be different about them? Be an improvement in the cathode or something of that sort. I don't know. Okay, well we can do the same thing here. Well, I, will, I have this set up for a 6K. We'll just look at what a 6J would require. And is it all the same? So okay, every, so it's 0347 of the five. That's the same. Zero three four seven five. Twenty two and fifty eight. Well, that's different. Six J. Six 
six K nineteen and sixty six, nineteen and sixty six, six J twenty two and fifty eight. Pretty darn close, eh? So I think these are what uh, you would I say are very, very, very similar tubes. 58. If they were used in some kind of like a push-pull arrangement, which these ones wouldn't be, but if they were used where they were really working together, you'd want the two of them to be the same tube, I would think, with the same strength. Great cap. See, one thing for this radio, I'm learning an awful lot by working on it, that's for sure. All kinds of little things I'm picking up. There we go. Short test good. And 6J7, 770 or 12 on this test. So it's well above. It's at 1,000. 1,000 and 1,400. Okay, i got to make notes on that stuff. Okay, so yeah, so I got this one out, pulled it out by the base very carefully, but discovered along the way that it's already loose here. The uh, glass globe is no longer glued to the base here. It's a Rogers tube. It's got a sticker all over it with stuff written on it. Almost certainly somebody has written the uh, mutual conductance from their tube tester. Or worse yet, they haven't used the mutual conductance tube tester. I haven't talked about this. There's another kind of tube tester that just tests the emissivity of the cathode, basically, and judges the tube on that, which is not bad, but it's not the same as measuring the mutual conductance that these, these uh, testers do. So if you did it on that tester, sometimes it's really 0 to 100%, and you're just reading a percentage in there. I don't know. 130 itself doesn't make a lot of sense. This is a 6Q7. This is a very, I think this is a very, very busy tube. It's got two parts in it and everything. I think. 6Q7. So, um, licensed by Thermionics Limited, Patent Canada, 1922 to 1942. Gives you an idea when that tube must have been made sometime after 1942. Okay, what was it again? 6Q7. 6Q7. You notice all these tubes I'm testing have only three identifiers, like a number, a letter, a number. That's early, early tubes. Not early, early tubes. Early tubes. 6.3 JR0307 with a 2. 0, 3, 0, 7 with a 2. That's the end. 17 and 40, 17 and 40. It's a triple section, grid cap. So this first one we need the grid cap on. I'm doing the triode section. So this, this has got two diodes and a triode in it. It's a busy, busy tube. The triode is hooked, the grid of the triode is hooked up to the cap. And then we're hooked up to the cap. Did I double check this? 6Q7 JR03072. JR03072. 1740. 17 and 40. 40, 40, 40. In you go. So this guy's important job is to rectify the output of the IF. Produce from it two things. One is some DC. You rectify an AC signal, get a little DC. But the main thing it's doing is it's providing, after this tube, it's providing a signal which can be recovered that's suitable for operating a speaker. So this guy is what, after this tube, what's happening in the radio is all audio. Before this tube, what's happening is all RF. <clears throat> okay, there we go. Looks good for shorts. Triode is supposed to be between 500, way down here, and 800. Let's try 
that again. Between 500 and 800. So again, testing low. Everything's testing low. You know what I didn't check? I didn't even check my line bolt, my line uh, adjust. I didn't do that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm just so tired. It's really not bad at all. Okay. Uh, again, another tube testing towards the bottom of its of its uh, of its range. Five hundred. Some other tests I could be doing on these tubes that I'm not doing. Gas test and, and other things. Um, and, right, and I'm not. <laughs> I'm the best. So I'm feeling now to see if the cap is, is loose on the uh, tube, and I don't think it is. Uh, okay, now you're going back to work. Six. Wait a minute. Yeah, six. Yeah, six cubes, seven. Oh boy. <laughs> For a minute, there's a different number on it. Back in you go. Okay, so the next, the next tubes, the next tubes have uh, cans on them. This is normally not a big deal at all. We just pull the can off. <clears throat> Excuse me. Exactly how the can is held is varying ways. Looks like this one is I'm pulling the tube out with the can is what it looks like. Yeah, so the tube has come out. Now the way the can is really held is through this big fat fitting here. That you can kind of see it has a dimension to it, so it's just sliding over the can here. The tube has come out with it. So unfortunately, I essentially pulled this out by the glass bulb, which is not what I want to do. Try something different on the other one. Push the tube out. Should I bother pushing the tube out? So a lot of these tube shields will separate. They're just spring loaded. This one's not. This one, this one's pretty tight. So push it out. Pushing it out to make sure it's the tube we think it is. Showing you over here, but the camera's over there. Sorry about that. Okay, so I pulled off this, obviously. I don't know how much of that you saw. Shame on me. Bad camera work. So I'm looking for the tube name. It's right in here. Oh my gosh, it's really. There it is 6K7. Uh, let's check that. So, oh, oh, I'm I'm quite mistaken here. Oh, look at this. Okay, so six K seven here, right? Six J seven. Yes, that's what was there. Notice these two tubes are operating the circuit in the radio called the expander, which we haven't even talked about yet. And so I'm on this one, six Q seven. Wait a minute, no I'm not. I just did that 6K7. Now I'm on the 6K7 and that's what came out of there and there's another 6K7. So there's three 6K7s. Oh, I didn't quite realize that. Okay, back to 6K7. So that thing I said when I started where I was going to make this a really efficient video and just show the results, that, that was not true. <laughs> I'm showing everything here. JR. Six K seven. JR O three four seven one five. O three four seven. 19 and 66. 19 is where it is. 66. P1 915 creep cap. K7. 
thumb saw made in the USA. Okay, 6K7, 915 and 1450. Those are the two ranges. It's coming up at 1500. So that's like a new. That's like a new two. That's excellent. Now there's three 6K7s in this radio, and no doubt they're going to be different strengths, and no doubt there's an optimum position for them in the radio. Strong one should be here. Weak one, put it there. Goodness knows what that might actually be. But that's where we're probably heading. So we have one really good 6K7 here so far. 6K7. And now we're going to go ahead and do another one right away. Okay, so I pulled out the third 6K7. 6K7. Wow, is that ever hard to see? Okay. Made in. It's a thumb saw also. Made in the US of A. I grew up in a small town, small farming town in the Niagara Peninsula. And in my town were two industrial factories. One made baskets. Heavy industry in my town, making baskets. I was in a fruit area, so fruit baskets, literally. And the other industry was making vacuum tubes. Can you believe it? <laughs> uh, baskets and vacuum tubes. It's kind of a extreme ends of uh, human endeavors here. 6K, 6K7 again. Let's see what we get. You know what? All three of these tubes have tested just like this. 1400 to 1500. They're all testing really good. Or is my tester just a little generous with this particular kind of tube? So in, in a radio or electronics, some tubes uh, are being beaten up. They're being operated in such a way that they're wearing out because that's the most economic way to do it. But other tubes are being operated in a way that they can probably last pretty much forever. Maybe that's what's going on with the 6K7s in this radio. They're operated so gently. And what I mean by that is uh, not a lot of voltage, not a lot of current. That would be what gentle is there. So, we've gotten along through a lot of the tubes here on the radio. There really aren't so many left now. We got, we got these two guys left. We've done all these. That's it, just these two guys left. So, once again, I'm into the grid cap problem. These metal tubes are a little more rugged. But I'm going to do the same thing here. The, the problem with twisting it to see if it's going to go, <laughs> if it's going to come off okay, is uh, when you find out it's not, it's too late. 6K7 written right in there. Another 6K7. We've got to pick a minute. There's one, two, three, four of them in here. Wait a second. Six K, six K, six K. 
Oh yeah, 6K7 right there. Okay, four of them. Okay, we'll do another 6K7. Only look at how different this one is. So there's a great example of, of what can happen in a radio like this. So the original tubes are glass covered with this big metal can. Or you buy a tube that comes with its own can. Now you could put this in there and do away with these. In fact, it's surprising in a way that this radio is made all the way to here with these old tubes. 67. There's quite a complex history to vacuum tubes, which I could not even begin to talk about. Uh, certainly you can learn about a specific tube and find out its history. It's usually quite interesting. Uh, but the whole picture is very, very complicated. And then it's times two because Europe was doing something a little bit different. I guess I put that in without the grid cap on, but I don't think that's a problem. Ooh, just there. Uh-oh. Shorts. Okay, good test. 915 and 1500, 1450. Look at that, right up there too. Very good. And the last one is a 6A8. Even if you just use the screwdriver to break to break the uh, friction on here, or just just to break it like that, maybe then you can twist it off okay from there. Because it's very disappointing when you knock one of those caps loose. Wow, this is another toughie here. Six A eight, just as it should be. Six A eight. Two tests for six A eight. Six point three. J R. Right. O three four seven with a five. That sounds familiar. 0347 with a 5. 22 and 50. 22 and 50. And this is the um, pentagrid section. Cap is G. So I put the G cap on. It's not going to fit again. Oh, that one grabs a little bit. This is the very, very first tube in the radio. When the signal comes in from the antenna. This is the first tube it encounters, I think. And that makes it extra important. So between 630 and 1000. Let's go to the more exciting camera shot at this point. 630 and 1000. Well, there it is, right between the, uh oh, uh oh. You see it going down? Oh, okay, so that's a sign of uh, wear on the tube. So I have a, a switch here called the life test. I almost never use it, but we're going to use it this time. I'll flip it on. And you're supposed to watch to see if the pointer moves. Seems to be going up, if anything. It's going up. Back to normal. So it could be going up because the tube is still warming up a little more. So there's a number of different uh, things that are happening in the tube there when you heat it up. So 
That's probably what's going on. So the final number we get, 750. You can hardly declare this to be a bad two. 750. 750. And we're supposed to be between, uh, where'd it go? Six, eight, eight, between six and a thousand. Seven fifty sounds okay. Now, second section here. Five, six, four, seven with a three. Five, six, four, seven with a three. Thirty and seventy-three. Thirty and seventy-three. time we're testing what does it say oscillator section micro I'm reading in here uh, oh 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 son of a gun that's again bad camera work so I'm reading down in here it's got a note oscillator section micro mo's only okay over 240 on 2000 on 3000 scale so I've never seen a note like this before Micromos only. Only okay. It's funny they would say micromos instead of saying uh, mutual conductance. But maybe it's a smaller word. They're trying to jam it in here or something. Micromos only okay over 240 on 3000 scale. Yeah, they don't get the, uh, they don't get two numbers here, the low and the high in this case. There's something funny about this. How are we testing this? Okay. So it's got to go over 240. Okay, now this will be exciting. Ready? Over 240. Did I do the short test on this guy? Maybe I can do it again. There we go. Oh, I'm on the 3000 scale. Okay, two, just under 200. Oh, so I'm going to vary the bias a little bit. We'll watch the pointer move. So this is uh, so. For instance, if I want this to pass, I, I have to have it up about here, 240. So now the bias is set to 20 instead of what it was supposed to be. What was it supposed to be? It was supposed to be 30. It's supposed to be here. So this is the oscillator section. Uh, this is not the, I don't think this is the first two uh, in the radio. This is the second two. So oscillator, so this is a mixture tube, I think, must be. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know what to think. A weak oscillator, uh, I'm not sure that's, well, unless the radio exhibits a problem. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't fret over it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my table of results over here and we're going to look at it and see what it all adds up to. So I, I missed recording the 6Q7 results, so I'm doing it again. So it's in there now. 6Q7, 0307 with a 2, 0307 with a 2, 17, 40. 3000 scale should be above 500 and it tests at about 400, 350 or so. So this one is not testing well at all. Um, 300. So, uh, and then we have the two plates. I don't, did I do the two plates? I can't remember. I don't think I did. I think I skipped it. Well, let's not skip it. So JR. 0507 with a 3. 05073. 17. 0 on English. P1. So this is a diode test. So if we look at the uh, scale on my tube tester, there, oh, don't knock over the camera. You'll see there's something up there that says diodes okay. So we just got to get above that. That's, that's the objective. Diodes okay. Ready? There we go. We press P1, diode. So diode OK. Next one, 0407. So I just move one setting and push the button again. P1, OK. So we got a weak triode. 
but the diodes are fine and, and there's just no surprise about that to me okay I think we're done with the tube tester okay, so we gotta think about this tube maybe we need another one 6q7 I'm pretty sure I've got some of those I'll have to go look have I got a good one that's a good question and the 6Q7 really did test badly. It's supposed to be 500. It came out at like 2, 250 or 300. It's called 300. So here's, here's the results. 45 is testing low. It may not be important at all. 6K7s, all testing good. 6J7, testing good. 6A8, getting 720, where you should get between 630 and 1000, that's okay. But on the oscillator side, we're getting a, a weak result. Um, so, I, 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 so maybe we need another, six, another 6A8 and another 6Q7, potentially, two of them. Otherwise, the rest I think are okay. The low 45s, I don't think it's that critical. They aren't driving speakers directly. They're driving another two. So, I, I don't know. And they're equal also, which is probably helpful. And so, I think if you have a weak output tube, or, or, or in this case, a weak, this is basically audio amplifier tubes, uh, compensation can amount to just turning the volume up a little bit higher. Okay, maybe that's simple. So, maybe two tubes. Got to think a bit about it. I should go see if I have some replacements. Anyway, if I do, then we have an opportunity to do some experimenting. And if I don't, then uh, then we have to decide to either just leave these tubes in there, which may be fine, or go ahead and order some, which would be a little bit unfortunate. If you order this tube, you're going to get another old one, probably. Not necessarily. You could get a new old stock tube, which means it's a tube that's basically been in the box since they made it 40, 50 years ago. And it's new in that sense, but it's old stock. New old stock. Okay, I'm gonna go rummage around and see if I can find a couple of these a couple of these tubes. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot the, the most interesting tube of them all. That's the I tube. So here we are. 6E5, it certainly looks like a 6E5. I can't see the proper name, but I, I would be stunned if this isn't a 6E5. 6 pin 2. Okay, 6E5. So the way this works in the tube tester is there's two settings, if you like. One should have the eye open and the other should have the eye closed. That's how this particular tube tester works. So we'll set it up here, 6.3 JR54, let's try that again, 5403, 5, these, these are not important, P4, I open, then we change two numbers here and then do it again, okay. Socket. Looks like it's this one. Fat pins. There we go. Okay. I'm going to get a good look at it. I'm going to swing my. Because uh, I don't think the meter is important in this at all in, in the, on this tester. So I'm going to move my camera. Yay, yay. <coughs> See if we can get it set up. Work on. Okay, so I got to I got to work on this a little bit to get this to, to really be okay. Or do I? Maybe it's okay right now. There we are. So we're looking straight down onto the eye tube here. Okay, just a little out of focus there, isn't it? Okay, I think we're ready at this point. So I'll, I'll flip on the tester. Six point three. Six and we'll watch and see what happens to the eye. So under this setting, the eye should be open. 
We should see it, and it should be open. Where is it? You have to push P4, I guess. Maybe that's what's required. You have to push, yeah, P4 to apply the voltages on this tester. Just giving it time to warm up. I'll do the short test. All good. P4, I open. So uh, now I'm looking at this with my own eye. This is really dull. This is really hard to see. Let me uh, shut off the lights in here. The really bright one is really bright. This one's not so bright. Let's see. Okay, try it again. P4. Okay, so I'm in a dark room now looking at this, and you know it's visible, but not, but barely, really. To see this, you would have to have the lights off uh, to see this. I think if you have lights on, I don't think you're going to see it. Now let's do the next test. The next test, change, just change one number, the third number from 0 to 2. And we repeat the test, and this time the eye should be closed. And it is, in fact, it's overlapping. So, so the eye is functioning. It's not as bright as it might be. Uh, for comparison, I have some of these. Let me find it, them, those. There they are. So now mine, if I remember right, are, are not very good. Remember right, let's see. This is a 6U5, 6G5. I'm not sure you can pop that in in a 6, oops, a 6E5. And then this one is a 6U5. Hmm. Ooh, big X on the top. Right, this is the bad one. So, 6U5, 6E5. I think they're all interchangeable. They certainly look like it, don't they? Well, I'm going to have to stop and just read up a bit before I uh, make a mistake. 6U5. Well, you know what we can do here? We use the tube tester. 6E5, we'll just go up to 6U5. U5. And the setting is JR5403. 54, ah. Well, that's the close setting. 2, 3. That's exactly the same settings. So I think these are interchangeable tubes. And then 542, which is where we are now. 542, so that's the other setting. Oh, down. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's identical otherwise. It's identical. Okay, let's try it. Pull this guy out. First, let's, let's try the one with the X. Why not? Sometimes I put an X in it. I really don't even plug it in. Let's see what. So hopefully the short test will, if there's a short in it, we'll find out right away. Okay, so what's happening here is if you look at the short light, make it a little easier to see a short light here. It's not flashing. That usually indicates a dead, a dead tube already. And uh, push the button and see if it lights up. There's nothing lighting up here. It's dead, but I think it's heating up, but not lighting up. So what has happened here exactly, we don't know. But the X is valid. Okay, now my other one. So the reason we're doing this is just to see what bright might look like in case this one's bright. We can compare it with what we saw in the other one. Here we go. Here we go. Short test. See, it's flashing again, so this one's a, a tip off. It's probably going to work. Here we go. Wow, wow, that's a bright one. Have a look. That's what bright should look like. And then I snap two back to zero. So, right, Let me just double check because I don't want to make a mistake. 625, two back to zero. Okay, I'll try it again. Yeah, it 
No, so this is so bright. In fact, let me switch cameras. And get an idea how bright this is. That's how bright it is. So this is almost like new. This is a great one. That's what I got. Anyway, that's all I've got for these tubes. So we'll, we'll continue on with the original one. And then I, get into, I can get into a discussion with the owner about whether this is good enough, which maybe it is, or maybe not. But it works. That's the main thing is it works. Now, magic eyes are very interesting things to have on a radio because they essentially show you the uh, they're showing you the ADC voltage which is uh, kind of uh, something well worth watching when you're tuning up your radio not just on the front but doing technical work on it you can actually rely on the magic eye to give you a quantitative indication of, uh, of stuff so it's kind of interesting it's like having an instrument built right into your right into your radio okay that's it for tube testing so now we know the whole story with the tubes in this radio